Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for choosing Across the Fence. I'm Will Michael in for Fran Stoddard. Few things feel as good as a dip in clear, clean water on a hot summer day. And in our state and region, there are plenty of great options, whether you want to swim in a big lake like Champlain or Bomazine, or smaller lakes like St. Catherine or Silver Lake. All Vermont State Park facilities perform weekly swim water testing to ensure the water's safe. This afternoon, we're going to get an in-depth look at water quality sampling through this video from the Lake Champlain Sea Grant Institute and UVM Extension. Lake Champlain is an extraordinary natural resource nestled between New York, Vermont, and Quebec. But the lake and its tributaries are being negatively affected by human activities on the land. Lake Champlain Sea Grant works to develop and share science-based information to improve the environment and economy of the Lake Champlain Basin. Monitoring water quality at beaches is important to help ensure the safety of swimmers. Lake water is sampled regularly to check for presence of harmful bacteria or other pathogens that may be present in the water as a result of things such as faulty septic systems, manure spills, geese or duck overabundance, swim accidents, or malfunctioning wastewater treatment plants. It's not practical to monitor for every kind of harmful bacteria or pathogen that might be found in beach water. So instead, we use what are called indicator organisms, which are easy to collect and test for. And they still give us a glimpse into if a beach has been polluted by fecal matter. The most common kind of indicator organisms used in fresh waters are called Escherichia coliform, otherwise known as E. coli. E. coli live in our guts and help digest the foods we eat, supplying us with necessary nutrients and sending what isn't necessary off as waste. Therefore, if E. coli are present in the water in high concentrations, there is likely a source of fecal contamination in the water. Luckily, most strains of E. coli are not harmful to us. Instead, they are necessary inhabitants of our guts and the guts of all warm-blooded animals. They serve as indicators of fecal pollution because the more there are of them in a water sample, the more likely it is that harmful bacteria or pathogens are present. Collecting a water sample to assess a water body for bacterial contamination is a straightforward process. Gather the required supplies, including waders, gloves, sampling bottle or bag, marker, and a cooler with ice before heading to the monitoring location. Once you're at your site, if you'll be sampling from the water, put on waders, disinfect your hands, put on latex or nitrile gloves, and then label your sample bottle and the cap or your Whirlpack bag with the site location, date, and time. Move slowly into the water to about knee deep. Allow the water to settle from having been stirred up by your movement. Open the sterilized sampling bottle, taking care not to touch the inside of the cap or the bottle. Reach out towards deeper water from where you are standing and turn the bottle upside down so the opening faces the water. Plunge the bottle into the water. Immerse it to about elbow's depth and move it in a sweeping motion away from this part. To complete the collection, Turn the bottle upright at the end of the sweeping motion and bring it up out of the water swiftly. Pour off a little of the water so the bottle is filled only to the shoulder. This allows for the sample to be gently mixed. Gently place the cap on the bottle and rinse. Pour the sample out behind you, away from the sampling location. Repeat this process so that you rinse the sample bottle and cap three times. The fourth time you fill the bottle, Again, pour off a little of the sample so the bottle is filled only to the shoulder, and then firmly cap the sample. This is your collected sample. Immediately place your sample in a cooler on ice, and if you're delivering it to a lab, be sure that you get it there within six hours of when the sample was collected. 
Complete your data sheet with all required information. It is critical to include date, time, location, and the name of the person sampling on the form. It is also important to note field conditions such as weather the previous two days, current weather, and site conditions. It is a good idea to use pencil to complete your data sheets as that will hold even if the paper gets wet. If possible, print your data sheet on right in the rain paper. Finally, protect your data sheet from your sample by sealing it in a Ziploc bag. Now that your sample is collected and your data sheet is completed, deliver or ship them to the lab where your sample will be processed. Your results will be available 18 to 24 hours after the lab has processed your sample. A result of 235 or greater CFUs, or colony forming units per 100 milliliters, represents an exceedance of the state standard for fresh water in both Vermont and New York. CFU is a measure of the number of bacteria colonies that grow when the sample is cultured in the lab. This cutoff point represents that about 8 out of 1,000 people will show signs of illness if swimming or immersed in water that exceeds this limit. A challenge with the available testing procedures is that results are not available until the next day. As such, we only know tomorrow if the beach was safe today. A general guideline is this. If there has been a rainstorm within the past two days, there is greater likelihood that water will have higher bacteria levels. You can also check websites for the state or municipal beach to track past beach closings as many will use a longer term average of sample results, generally determined over a 30 day period. Lake Champlain is a natural treasure. We all have a part to play in protecting it and the waters that drain to it, now and into the future. This video was produced by Lake Champlain Sea Grant, a partnership among the University of Vermont, SUNY Plattsburgh, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. To learn more about Lake Champlain Sea Grant and to see other videos in this series, please visit our website. The water quality of our lakes, rivers, and streams is also impacted by what happens in our forest. This next video from the Lake Champlain Basin Program and Paragon Productions of Duxbury introduces us to a longtime Vermont logger and we learn about the best management practices that are helping to protect forests and waterways. I've been logging full time since 1987. Before that I worked with my dad for a while, for probably since I was like nine. <laughs> Some guys get in it and they're in it for three years and they're done. They're on to doing something else, but I mean, I'm in this for a lifetime. Roughly 73% of the Lake Champlain Basin's land area is forested. Much of this land is far from Lake Champlain and the human impact is relatively minor. But forests in Vermont contribute 15% of the phosphorus delivered to Lake Champlain. Broader use of management practices on private and state forest lands are helping to achieve the goals of the Lake Champlain Phosphorus TMDL. This area is within the Nebraska Valley Miller Brook watershed. It's a multi-use forest. It has lots of recreation, state parks, ski areas, hiking trails, but it's also a working forest where we harvest timber, we harvest firewood, we harvest all of the, the, the range of forest products that we get from our, our northern forests. We create trails, we create roads, we have stream crossings and we need to do a good job of, of protecting the water quality in those areas. When we don't stabilize our trails and, and remove our crossings, that sediment can travel into headwater streams and eventually make its way to Lake Champlain. And that soil carries the phosphorus, which is, is the issue, and we want to prevent that. Water bars are put in to control the erosion, like when it rains, like right now. <clears throat> And if you put them in correctly, there's less erosion. This is what we call closeout. It's the part of the sale after the harvesting is done. So this flag tells the excavator operator that we need a water bar right here, which will divert the water that's coming down the trail, off the trail, into undisturbed soil so it will soak in and it won't have enough speed or velocity to have any erosion. 
Regulations that the state has on water quality has changed a the lot. They make sense. Regulations make sense. They rewrote the handbook for the water quality, the AMP handbook. The AMPs were Vermont's answer to the federal government for how the state was going to maintain water quality on logging jobs. We set up five skitter bridges on this job. Three were in and maintained at all times, and the other two bridges were temporary bridges. We moved from brook crossing to brook crossing, and these are very, very small brooks. But if you don't impact the brooks, it keeps the water clean all the time. Use those portable skitter bridges from the state, and they work excellent. Cordage-wise, there's at least 2,500 cord that come across this big bridge right here, 2,500 cords. I'd say 1,500 trips across that bridge with 43,000 pound machine, so bridges do work. And as you can see, there's hardly any uh, impact on the brook. Obviously, you, do, you want to try to keep the water as, as clean as you can. It makes it harder. You just got to work Saturdays and sometimes even a Sunday and just fill in wherever you can and keep your guys going at the same time. I mean, just takes more time, that's all. But it's worth it in the end, you know. And once again, our thanks to Paragon Productions and the Lake Champlain Basin Program for sharing that video with us. And thank you. We know you have choices, so thanks for choosing us. I'm Will Michael, inviting you to join us back here each weekday afternoon for another visit across the fence.